the biggest mystery to me is kind of like how people are made and what they think deep, deep down in their mind, what makes people do what they do, think what they think, make the decisions they think. You know what I mean? Because because it's really weird there's you know people kind of ask why you do this why you do that and um it's hard like so much of it like when you go deep deep down it's just like luck like what makes a person want to be able to work harder than somebody else and i think it's so not self-righteous but in a way when people are like yeah i worked hard and it's like you have the ability to work hard like what makes someone have the choice you know, to have mental strength to make those decisions and stuff. So to persevere, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure everyone could choose to persevere and everyone does have a choice. But what makes one person make a choice and another make another? You know what I mean? But same thing with like what makes somebody such an athlete and what makes somebody an incredible writer? You know, what makes somebody, you know, amazing at computers and what makes somebody a musician? So stuff like that is always a mystery to me. So I'm sure little things shape you along the way and then you kind of have to nourish those. So I saw what I liked. Um, I saw what I was interested in, passionate in. And I just think those have been nourished with a lot of luck all the way up, you know, until I really started like wrestling to compete, um, which started, you know, my MMA. Um, I guess my push for MMA. Like everyone in that starts in a gym and wants to fight, wants to be the UFC champion. That is the end goal, right? That is the end goal. That is the everything, right? You want to get in the UFC. You want to be the UFC champion. That's the end goal. I have it right in front of me and that is motivation enough. Like at the end of the day, I'm a competitor, you know, that stuff goes without saying. If you've made it this far, you made it this far, you're motivated, you're competitive, you wanna be a champion. Every single person that trains mixed martial arts wants to be the UFC champion, right? But it's funny, because at the same time, it's like, this is my third time. Um, I've had times when I thought the only thing that was gonna define me and give me self-worth and make me feel like I was enough was having a UFC title. You know what I mean? And you know what? I didn't get it. But there were still people that like love me, whether I won, whether I lost, and that will continue to forever. People are always gonna say, I was a good fighter. I was a great fighter. Fuck, Joe B was the greatest fighter. He was the best fighter. Being a UFC champion now and having a belt going for it it is just confirmation that he was the best you know before it's like a word of mouth everyone's gonna say i was a good fighter for the rest of the time dude was amazing fighter oh, i love watching that guy he was great he was good man he was he was one of the best to ever do it now it's just confirmation like he is the best and that goes a long way you know what i mean having an extra line on your wikipedia page you know it has your record, has this, UFC champion of the world. You know, it just signifies, you know, what people are thinking, like it's a fact. Like, you know, for the rest of the time, they can be like, he was the best in the world. He was the best in the world for, you know, for that night. We all have our own fucking version though, tired and good and bad, you know? Yeah. It's different, but that's how I felt. I was like, how the fuck am I gonna get through this? I'll go for a fucking year. Right. We're good done, right?
Yeah, okay. yeah, we're done. You know, even though I'm Joe's coach, you know, Joe to me in one word uh, could be described as an inspiration or inspirational. Um, Joe's battled through life's issues as we all have. Um, Joe's battled through professional is issues with setbacks and injuries. Uh, each time he, he puts a smile on, he appreciates what, he, what he's doing and where he's at, regardless of the circumstances. Um, and you know, and he battles, and through all that, stays true to himself. Uh, and Joe is a genuine person. He's a generous person. Uh, he's one of the hardest workers I know. So f to me, Joe is an inspiration. Yeah, if I had to tell my younger self, if I had to tell young Joe, I would just tell him to f just be prepared for the ups and downs, you know? And it's not always easy, you know? And most of the times it's a blessing and it's not always easy and you're gonna feel like discouraged and sometimes things are gonna work out and it's the best time ever, you know, a win or whatever works out. Sometimes it doesn't work out and that's like the worst time ever, but just to try to take the same enthusiasm, you know, and the same attitude through all of it when it works out, when it doesn't work out, that's the, that's, the, that's the challenge, you know, that's the thing that's gonna be hard, is keeping that same, the same energy and same, you know, drive and inspiration when it works out and when it doesn't work out. I think that's what really, like, makes the journey, you know, is um, keeping, keeping it the same through the ups and downs. I think it's very important, you know, because you can't play too much into a win and act like you're on top of the world, and you can't just be bogged down by loss or something not going your way, you know. Just keep moving forward, I think, is the main key. Um, like, whatever's going to happen is going to happen, you know, and just do your best to make it, uh, make it your way you know, make it what you want it to be. Because whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. So do every single thing you can do to, to make it your best, yeah. That's about it. Feeling good, man. Feeling better than ever, but you know, even that shit, I don't, I don't take into account too much. That doesn't mean shit to me. I feel good, everything's good, everything's good. I felt good before. I don't take that into account. I just, every day I'm like, I'm gonna try my fucking best. Cause I felt like shit and I've done amazing. I felt amazing and fought like shit. So it's like, I try, I try to do my best every day, but you know, that gives you a chance of winning. You know what I mean? Nothing's guaranteed. You can feel as good as you can. You have a chance at winning. You know, the only way to earn a win is second by second in there. And what you're doing right now every day gives you small percentages of a chance every day. But at the end of the day, you have a chance of winning, and I'm just giving myself the best chance right now. I think so much goes into that longevity that I've had um, for my whole career, you know, being, you know, on the top, you know, in title contention pretty much the last 10 years of my life. I've been in the top three in the world, top two in the world at two different weight classes, and it's like, a lot of it, I just sometimes I'm just like, I start always with luck. I'm just, you know what, I'm lucky. I'm lucky that fight went this way at this moment and that this happened. And then I have to look at it, well, I got to give myself some credit, right? Um, I was consistent in practice. I didn't take any shortcuts. I worked hard, you know. And then I go back to luck and I'm just kind of like, well, I'm so lucky I was able to work hard and like what gave me you know, that mental fortitude to like work hard and push through, not get injured, like little things like that. And I'm like, all right, well, I worked hard, I made the best of it. And I'm like, well, why did I make the best of it every single day? Why was I positive every day? And I still go back like to, I think the gratitude I've had for being able to do this, like it's very strong, you know, being thankful for something and then being able to do it, I think, like I said, like that led to my consistency. That led to me um, trying hard in practice every day when I go in, 
you know, and that leads to consistency. Because like, that's the easy thing to say is like, I've been consistent, you know, I've been consistent over time. Well, why have you been consistent? Like, why have your practices been good? Why have you, you know, and I look at it as, I look at that gratitude. I look at the personal life I've had. I look at my wife is a big, big key in my, in my positivity. Um, she helps me out a ton. I feel like grateful for my life. And like I said, when you feel grateful for your life and what you're doing, fighting, practicing has made that life, you go in and you, and you're pretty much fighting for that life that you have, you know, like I kiss my wife goodbye in like a nice house with my dog, like making coffee, drive off in a luxury car. Like I'm going every day to like attain that and be thankful for that. Benny. Hey, Ben. Hey. Guard dog. Hey. The guard dog. But he loves you. Hey, Ben. Come here. Give me a hug, bud. I miss you. Joe's great during camp. Joe is pretty much the same during camp as he is out of camp. I mean, maybe a little more tired um, and like not eating the way outside of camp Joe would eat. Uh, but personality wise, he's totally the same, super easy to be around, like never forgets that fighting's a part of his life. Like he still comes home and is a wonderful husband. Um, he'll still like help out around the house if I ask him. So he's not like in a bad mood or like, you know, demanding or, or thinks like things should be different in his life. Um, he's, he's just a constant. What does this symbolize? That is, that symbolizes, um, just that me. I wouldn't let him buy the real picture. <laughs> no, that that symbolizes me and Megan on an adventure, on a fucking weird adventure. You know, when you look at it, it's two people. She looks scared, but she obviously trusts, you know, the man and the journey they're on. And that's kind of how I look at the picture. Um, it's just two people on a crazy journey, trusting each other and in it together. Um, and the weirdness of the journey, the wildness of the journey represents what it is. I mean, they're on a fish, it looks kind of odd. And that's actually an artist, Hieronymus Bosch, who is an incredible artist, one of my favorites. And he does very, very intricate paintings, triptych paintings, three things, a lot of things going on. So that is just a small, small piece of one of his paintings. That's like, that's in the corner on one of the paintings, but they made it bigger. And I just like, I love that picture. Um, because like I said, I think it just symbolizes two people on the wild journey that is life committing to each other. I'm not rich, so I can't have a Picasso, so I had to buy a print of Picasso. But the only reason I bought that one, Boy With The Pipe, is because Frank Ocean sings about it in a song. He says he's gonna empty his bank, bank account and buy that boy with a pipe. So I bought it for 20 bucks. <laughs> Megan is the gangster of, of, of the two of us. And she always loved that picture. And I've obviously grown to love it because Big, Biggie and Tupac are opposites. This has been above our, this has been the centerpiece of our house. I mean, for like eight years above yeah. our couch. It's obviously in the middle of our buffet. And I think like it symbolizes the gangster in her because she's gangster, but also it's like two complete opposites. At that moment, they're together, they're in harmony, and that's, you know, that photo is forever. So it's like we're complete opposites, kind of West Coast, East Coast um, vibe there. So that's kind of how we look at the picture. That's how we take shots, baby. Hey, right there. Everybody. <laughs> what is that? Um, this one's No Joke Ginger. This one's Mighty Tumeric. We take a shot of each each day because yeah. we're sober, so we still like to party. <laughs> we still like to take shots. We are, we are Vegas residents. We still <laughs> like shots, just to our house. <laughs> I mean, I think for us, we just recognize that, like, we have a wonderful life as a whole, and our careers are part of that, but they're not the only thing. So we take care of each other as human beings. Um, we certainly like if. If I'm working like say a big Conor McGregor fight or Joe has a fight coming up, we know that there's like 
things that you have to do to help the other to make life easier, but you want to do that. Like for he and I, it's never been really a challenge. I mean, yes, there are a lot of highs and lows. Um, I would say probably fighting is, is a more drastic example of that, but I have good days and bad days at work too. And we just try to be there for one another. There are times where you can't fix it, but if you can be steady and a rock at home and just be there to listen and be like, listen, I'm so sorry, like this situation sucks, but I'm here for you and that's not going to change. It actually means a lot more than, than people realize. And in terms of fighting, like, I think for me, the most important thing is not to say anything really, but just to be there for him. Like if he wants to talk, that's great. And I'm here to listen. And if he wants advice to give it to him, but Really, I think like the most important thing in terms of his career is just to to be there and not necessarily like give give all this stuff, you know, just be there and and be ready for him when he needs to talk and and be ready to listen. And um, otherwise, just, you know, understand that there are good days and bad days, just like anybody else would have anywhere with any other job. But um, be grateful for having a wonderful life together. And each part of that adds up to, to the whole. Like, I think she's the best ever. And she is somebody that, to me, helped me, helped me believe that I deserve, like, good things. That I deserve, like, to be the best. And then made me believe that I was the best. Because I'm at home every day, and, like, I have the best fucking wife ever. So I'm like... I deserve the best things. I deserve to be the world champion, you know? Um, and I believe I'm the best because it's like, that's how I feel every day. Like, you think I'm the best. If you think I'm the best and, and like, you are the fucking best and like, you know, you make me believe that. You make me feel like I'm enough. And that whole like belief I think is, is huge too, you know? So that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing, you know? like. You have people around you that like build you up and like uh yeah that's how i feel with her um and like same thing with coaches like you know they make you feel like you're the best and then they make you kind of believe you're the best and you just strive to do that every single day